Oxygen levels. Oxygen levels are at 100%. Temperature at 66 degrees. What's good, y'all? It's your boy Jeski Chuck, back with another creepy and scary reaction video. Today, we're diving in the depths of the ocean, and we're going to find these buried pyramids, these secret creatures, and all different types of weird anomalies going on under UFOs. the ocean. UFOs. Join me today on today's creepy and scary TikTok as we venture under the dark water. Join me. And make sure you have your life jacket, because we're going deep. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Let's go into these depths. Number three, three mysterious underwater discoveries. Number three, the lost city. Ancient Greek scripture mentioned a city by the name of Heraklion, but no evidence of the city was ever found. However, in 2012, explorers found old sphinxes and strange structures off the northern coast of Egypt. A whole city, said to be Heraklion, was found at a depth of 164 feet. Number 2, The Anomaly. In 2011, something was found in the Baltic Sea using sonar equipment. The object looked man-made, and had a shape very similar to the spaceships in Star Wars. Some people believe it's a secret military experiment, while others believe it's a UFO. Number 1, Cuban Ruins. In 2001, sonar equipment picked up weird signals from the west coast of Cuba. Divers found large stacks of rocks forming pyramids. The structure is said to be at least 50,000 years old, and could change what we know about human history. Pyramids did not even exist that far back in history. 3 Mysterious Underwater Discoveries Number 3, The Lost The Baltic Sea Anomaly absolutely fascinates me that it looks just like the Millennium Falcon. And it's just sitting there giving off these different readings off the different electronic devices but there you know we need to get some type of crane and drag that boy out and see what's really going on as a matter of fact we need to head over there right now did you know there might be a crashed ufo underwater off the coast of sweden it's called the baltic sea anomaly and in 2011 explorers discovered this bizarre object on the seafloor when they returned to study it more, their equipment strangely stopped working when they got within 650 feet of it, and it would turn back on again when they backed off. It's around 200 feet wide and 26 feet tall, and it appears like it could be man-made. Its circular shape and angular patterns on it has led many to believe that it could be an alien spaceship. However, most scientists agree that it's probably just a glacial deposit. But what do you think it is? Let me know what you think in the, the comments. Crashed UFO. Did you know there might be a crashed UFO? Where did this strange object in the Baltic Where did this come from? In 2011, an unidentified object was found in the Baltic Sea, between Sweden and Finland. Initial sonar images showed a peculiar object, almost similar to the Millennium Falcon, from Star Wars. And behind it, a thousand foot long runway, indicating that it might have crashed at the site. However, when the Ocean X team decided to explore further, and take some high quality images of what was on the seabed, their photographic equipment failed on them. Furthermore. The object, now known as the Baltic Sea Anomaly, was discovered to be emitting a mysterious electrical signal that jammed the sonar and drained the battery in their satellite phones. Till this day, scientists have no idea what the object is, or where did this strange object in the Baltic Sea come from? Emma, within a radius of 200 meters around the stone disk, mysterious electrical interference suddenly began to disable the compasses, phones, and all the team's equipment. This ended their second expedition to the object. New images have allowed scientists to examine the right angles of the Baltic anomaly in detail, but they were still very skeptical. It was really advantageous for Ocean X to My question is, are we just going to leave it down there? We haven't got any recent updates from what I can find. And this is just too fascinating just to give up. But we'll continue looking on these waters. What else do they have? Oxygen level 75%. Jet ski check, please use caution. This is the prototype. Hey, y'all, Meyer here. This video here. 
this video was just literally released on Twitter. It's footage of what is to be a UFO being chased and it drops into the water and takes off, which we've known and have seen UFO on radar have done. The military has chased unidentified objects doing the same thing. This one happens to be caught on camera. Now, is this real or is this phenomenal CGI? You guys tell me. The first clip is muted, but I posted the second clip with the original audio. Like, post, comment, repost, let me know. Tell me what you guys think this is. Is this real or is this a phenomenal hoax? I don't know how you can hoax two helicopter or a helicopter and two jets, but. Hey y'all, Meyer here. This video was all right. My reaction when seeing that is the acting it seemed like there was some acting on the boat but looking at that ufo splash into that water that could have been some pretty good cgi you know but at the same time they could be splashing off in that water and we do know these helicopters are right on their tail every time we see a ufo story so Aliens caught crawling on beach in South Africa. So, they're not aliens. They're spiders. Giant sea spiders, to be exact. Although technically they're not actually spiders, they're more related to like horseshoe crabs and scorpions. Scientists also found out that they're venomous and carry enough toxin to life deprive an iguana. And while it can't delete a human, it can cause excruciating pain and nerve damage, especially if you have an allergic reaction to it. But there is a moral here. If someone on the internet says something confidently and without stuttering, you're probably going to believe them because everything I just said is a lie. Those are actually dead aloe plants from South Africa, also called the Cape Aloe. This is what they're supposed to look like. So no, they're not dangerous. In fact, researchers have been studying them to see if they can be used to treat different types of cancer, rheumatism, diabetes, uh, gout, all that stuff. So yeah, that's all it is. But hey, don't be disappointed because I promise you this is 100% real. The more you know. Aliens caught crawling on beach in South Africa. He had me for a second. I'm like, really? That thing is crawling? You know, hey, he has a point. Alaska Triangle, known for its deep waters down to a staggering 26,000 feet, the perfect place for an underwater alien base. There have been many reports over the past few decades of unidentified underwater objects. These UFOs have been tracked underwater and stayed underwater for a long time, evaded the Navy, and they go so deep that we don't know where they're. I am very convinced that there's some kind of base underwater. According to my source, there are extraterrestrial bases under the water off the coast of Alaska. It's the perfect place for extraterrestrials to set up underwater bases. You have 33,000 miles of untapped coast and over 3 million lakes. Alaska Triangle, known for its deep waters down to a staggering 26,000 feet, the perfect place for an underwater alien base. There have been many reports over the past few decades of unidentified underwater objects. These UFOs have been tracked underwater and stayed underwater for a long time, evaded the Navy, and they go so deep that we don't know where they're. I am very convinced that there's some kind of base underwater. According to my source, there are extraterrestrial bases under the water off the coast of Alaska. It's the perfect place for extraterrestrials to set up underwater bases. You have 33,000 miles of untapped coast and over 3 million lakes. In 1969, Dan Willis, a naval communications operator, decoded a secret message detailing a jaw-dropping UFO sighting. I was a certified high-speed code operator, you know. Yeah, type of thing. I worked at the uh, code room, the Naval Communication Station in San Francisco. I received a secret priority message from a ship that was off the coast of Alaska. The crew reported a brightly glowing reddish-orange elliptical object, approximately 70 feet in diameter, that emerged out of the ocean and then shot straight up into space. The radar operator tracked the blips going 
in excess of 7,000 miles per hour. I have to admit, for a second, I was thinking of taking this secret message, make a copy of it, but I knew if I did, I'd be facing 10 years in prison, so I had a second thought. The incident left him with more questions than answers, prompting him to hunt for more sightings across Alaska's ocean. Dan uncovered multiple similar reports of disc-shaped objects emerging from the ocean near Alaska. One such report from 1945 describes an encounter with a large round object that rose from the sea near the Aleutian Islands in Alaska. The object, estimated to be 150 to 200 feet wide, circled a ship, leaving the crew both mesmerized and uneasy. They witnessed a UFO come up out of the water that was 150 to 200 feet wide, and it started circling the boat. 1945, it was on its own propulsion system, wasn't affected by the wind, the sailors said. It circled around the ship two or three times. All 14 members of the crew witnessed this and reported this when they got back to shore. Mysteriously, the top secret report compiled by the crew never saw the light of day. All the reports that I've researched through, people see things coming up under the ocean and they shoot off at tremendous speeds. Alaska, a land of breathtaking beauty and home to some of the deepest waters on Earth. A fact that might make you pause and wonder what could be lurking in those mysterious depths. Alaska. Okay, this is Italy. Apparently, these things are falling into the water. Hey. They look like little orbs. They look like little orbs. Do y'all see that? I mean, they say space is water and water is space, right? Oh, my goodness. Y'all see that? Y'all see the formation? Okay. That was my first time seeing the longer version of the video. I seen a shorter version of that. Looking at the end of that video, it looked like it might have been a drone performance show. That's what the vibes I was getting. And maybe like the three or four of them, five, Maybe the battery died on them boys. But if you look at the formation at the end of that last creepy and scary TikTok, it looked like it was drones, like the drone shows, because that is a thing. Those things are beautiful. Look at all the different colors. That one has streaks going through it. That one's just, man, where is that? Stick the GoPro in the water and let's see it. How big is it? Like 50 feet? This ghostly creature is a giant phantom jelly. It is a deep sea jellyfish that can reach up to 1 meter in diameter, and its long trailing tentacles can extend to lengths of over 10 meters. This makes it one of the largest species of jellyfish in the world. The big tentacles, also known as oral arms, are only there to trap prey and do not sting. They also possess bioluminescent capabilities, meaning they can produce light, allowing them to communicate, attract prey or deter predators in the darkness of the deep ocean. And due to their remote habitat below 600 meters, they have only been seen a few times. Comment your most feared sea animal and follow for more animal facts. Wow, so that was the phantom jellyfish, one of the largest jellyfishes.
the bioluminescence that it produces that's cool i didn't see any lights popping off on the jellyfish from those but the fact that it can do it man that's very interesting this is one of the first times i've seen that a phantom jellyfish the more you know oxygen levels at 65 percent captain What if those are cloaked UFOs? Hey, for entertainment purposes only, you, you know, I'm just looking at it. The first reaction I'm getting off this creepy TikTok is what if those are cloaked UFOs? What do you guys think it would be? Comments below. What is that thing? Look how big his mouth is. That is a creature for sure. And something's moving. Hey, she's Activate defense mechanism. Activate defense mechanism. We ain't gonna be having none of that on our ship. Let's go. I'm the captain of this ship. That octopus almost had him. You see how he looked back at the camera? He said, man, they almost got my mask. Did you see that? Well, y'all better leave them octopus alone. Maybe the octopus felt something from like the flash or the frequency coming from that camera. Something to think about. Legend from the ancient text, the Mahabharata, now officially located with very compelling evidence. Finding different stone sculptures, structures, pottery shards, and wooden artifacts that would allow them to carbon date this site to over 9,000 years ago. What is now 70 feet underwater is 100% an ancient city of India that clearly looks to be the once mythical city of Dwarka founded by Lord Shiva. In Sanskrit, Dwar means door or gate, so Dwarka was the gate to India, a once thriving city now underwater just off the coast of northern western India. In the year 2000, the marine arch- If you guys been following my episodes, the last episode we did, or the two before that on the moon map, talks about how there could be possibly land before the flood. What if this was one of the lands? Well, it has to be because it was submerged and you know, as far as I know, we weren't all breathing water back in the day, so this had to be above land. So this Indian civilization underwater, Dorka, it had a portal too? 
Man, where did that portal go to? We gotta dive more into this Dorka. If I'm even saying it right, the Indian civilization. If you looked at some of the underwater photos, it looked like some of those ancient Tartarian buildings, to be honest. Like it looked like some of the same structures, like those structures could have had some type of frequency going on. Now they're talking about portals as well, underwater portals. Let's go hit that like and subscribe button. You guys know what time it is. We're on these dark waters and we're going to find it. Survey of India discovered something amazing under the water. We're going to do this one more time just for analysis because this was extremely interesting. Let me move it down. This is underwater. So this Indian civilization, this is a could possibly be a portal. Who knows? If this was a portal above them, who who's gonna get into that? This could possibly be a portal for a giant that they stepped into. How how tight would that be? Look at that. This structure. Oh, yeah, we had to replay this one. There was too many gems in this this small video. Look at this. Tell me they weren't conducting some type of ether from there. This obviously was on top of it. Obviously was on top of the structure. It fell off. This is the same way that the ancients knew how to to get the ether. It was almost a prerequisite for a town. Look at these buildings, man. It's like it's 3D printed. India, there, there's a lot going on with ancient civilizations in India. There, they had some type of technology for real going on. I don't know what happened to India, but they definitely um, had some super technology going back in the day. And I'm starting to think if they got a portal, those those portals are, are too big for someone just to walk in. A giant would have to jump, step into it, if you ask me, or jump into it. Heraklion, Egypt. The legendary beginnings of Heraklion go back as far as the 12th century BC, and it's mentioned multiple times by ancient Greek historians. The city was said by Herodotus to have been visited by Helen of Troy before the Trojan War began. It's also said to be the site where the divine hero Heracles took his first footsteps in Africa. Known as Thonis by the Egyptians, Heraklion was originally built on adjoining islands in the Nile River Delta and was intersected by canals with a number of harbors and anchorages. The city was one of Egypt's main ports for international trade and the collection of taxes. Around 150 BC, several major earthquakes followed by tidal waves led to a 110 square kilometer portion of the Nile Delta collapsing under the sea, taking Heraklion with it. It's been left relatively undisturbed beneath the sea for thousands of years, with sand and other debris covering the remains of the city, and making accidental discovery very unlikely. In the early 2000s, however, a group of divers working off the Egyptian coast found a large piece of rock under the seabed, and brought it up to land. It was a section of Hapi, the god of fertility, whose statue stood at the western mouth of the Nile as a gatekeeper for Heraklion. They continued searching and eventually unearthed six more pieces, along with other treasures, including the ruins of temples, shards of pottery, precious jewels, coins, oil lamps, processional barges, and busts. As the years have gone on, more and more artifacts continue to be found. In 2021, a team from the European Institute for Underwater Archaeology, led by French marine archaeologist Frank Godio, uncovered new parts of the underwater city. The new discoveries included remains of a large tumulus, a Greek funerary area, along with sumptuous finery offerings that suggested, quote, spectacular ceremonies must have taken place there. The discovery of these kinds of artifacts within Heraklion 
points to the interplay between Pharaonic and Greek societies, and the role trade played in binding the two together. Ongoing surveys and excavations of Heraklion bring new knowledge of the fallen city every year. Pavla Petri, Greece Located in the Peloponnesus region of southern Greece lies the underwater ancient city of Pavla Petri. Smerged four meters underwater, some consider it to be the basis for the legendary story of Atlantis. Nearly 5,000 years old and dating from around 2800 to 1200 BC, it is the oldest known underwater city in the world. Sea level, sea level rises and three to four different earthquakes pushed the city down until it was submerged around 1000 BC. Although Pavla Petri has eroded over thousands of years, the town layout remains as it was. This is thanks to shifting sands and the settlement's enclosure in a protected bay. Discovered in 1967 by Nicholas Flemming and mapped by a team of archaeologists from Cambridge, Pavla Petri was an incredibly well-designed city with roads, two-story houses with gardens, temples, a cemetery, and a complex water management system, including channels and water pipes. The center of the city was dominated by a large plaza measuring around 40 by 20 meters. Although Pavla Petri was uncovered over 50 years ago, it wasn't until 2009 that the city was able to be properly surveyed. The University of Nottingham, under the direction of Dr. John Henderson, began a five-year Pavla Petri underwater archaeology project, which used a combination of archaeology, underwater robotics, and state-of-the-art graphics to survey the seabed. Learning archaeologists, aided with 3D sonar mapping technology, were able to digitally survey the entire site, and what they found completely surpassed all expectations. They uncovered thousands of artifacts, which helped create a deeper understanding of what everyday life would have looked like in Pavla Petri. Ceramics dating back to the end of the Stone Age suggest that the city was so old that it existed in the period of the famous Greek epic, the Iliad. The discovery of a possible megaton, a monumental structure with a large rectangular hall, also suggested that the town had been used by the elite, elevating its status. Historians believe that the ancient city was a center of commerce for the Minoan and Mycenaean civilizations. The future of Pavla Petri remains uncertain. The fragile remains are at risk due to their lack of protection, pollution, waves, current, and tourism. With less than 1% of the ocean floor having been surveyed to date, it's places like Pavla Petri that keep the idea of an Atlantis alive. Yonaguni Monument, Japan The sea off Yonaguni, the southernmost of the Ryukyu Islands in Japan, is a popular diving location during the winter months due to its large population of hammerhead sharks. In 1987, local diver Kinichiro Aratake, a director of the Yonaguni Cho Tourism Association, noticed a series of almost perfectly carved steps with straight edges submerged 25 meters below the surface of the sea. Shortly after this discovery, a group of scientists directed by University Professor Masaaki Sea Level Rises Professor Masaaki Kimura visited the formations. The group claimed that the stepped monoliths must be man-made and that they were at least 10,000 years old, possibly a remnant of the mythical lost continent of Mu. In a 2007 revision of these statements, Kimura changed his stance estimated the formations dated to 2,000 to 3,000 years ago. He believes he can identify a pyramid, castles, roads, monuments, and a stadium. Some historians believe that Kimura's claims are pseudo-archaeological and that the steps are a product of nature. Indeed, the site resembles natural formations seen elsewhere in the world, with distinctly defined edges and flat surfaces, such as Giant's Causeway in Northern Ireland, whose interlocking columns were formed by a volcanic eruption thousands of years ago. Uh, that is false. I believe that is organic for entertainment purposes only. Organic group structure with the hexagonal pattern. Anytime you see a hexagonal pattern, that's organic. 
like honeycombs. The formations are also attached to a larger rock mass, further propelling the idea that the Yonaguni is a natural phenomenon rather than man-made. Neither the Japanese Agency for Cultural Affairs nor the government of Okinawa Prefecture recognizes the features as important cultural artifacts, and neither has carried out any research or preservation work on them. Although Yonaguni's mythical origin story may be untrue, it will likely continue to fascinate a generation of divers to come. There is no way you guys can look at that and look me in the eyes and tell me that's not man-made. Well, they could be right. It's not man-made. It could be made by something else, you know, so they could be telling the truth. But that didn't form organically is what we're trying to drive here. There's no way if you look at those steps or whatever type of structure that is, the edge of a building, you're telling me they had pyramids and a road and all this is underwater. We're not putting any type of emphasis on trying to check this out or discover more. And that's why we're under in these dark waters to uncover the truth you got a whole pyramid sitting underwater and you guys don't want to put the time and to see what's really going on out here man we need a whole archaeological team down there giving us weekly updates van fortress turkey in 2017 a group of divers discovered a lost castle in the depths of Lake Van, the largest lake in Turkey. From around 2007, the team of divers, led by underwater photographer Tasim Salin, explored the waters beneath Lake Van, documenting microbiolites in archaeological sites. In 2016, the team found a structure outside the harbor of Adil Savaz, a town in Turkey that has been inhabited for thousands of years. It wasn't until 2017 that the fortress was actually discovered with its walls starting within the harbor and continuing beyond. The site of the ruins covers about one square kilometer, with walls as tall as three meters in some places, and is thought to be 3,000 years old. The spectacular ruins are believed to have been built by the Urartian civilization, an Iron Age kingdom that was centered around the lake and has other stone fortifications nearby. The castle is made primarily of cut stones, and one of the divers found a lion drawing on one of them a popular motif among the people of Urartu. There had been reports from around the 1950s and 1960s of the existence of the structure, with one intriguing paper published in 1958 by archaeologist Charles Allen Burney and G. R. J. Lawson discussing a medieval castle whose builders had reused blocks that had been constructed by the Urartians 3,000 years ago. More research is needed to determine exactly what the ancient remains consist of. Xicheng, China. I love this stuff. Often called the Atlantis of the East by travelers, the ancient underwater city of Xicheng, meaning Lion City in Mandarin, is a time capsule of Imperial China. Located 40 meters under Chandao Lake in Zixiang Province, 400 kilometers south of Shanghai, the city was flooded by the Chinese government in 1959 to make way for the Xinam hydroelectric dam required for the province of Zhejiang. Approximately 300,000 people were relocated as a result of the project, some of whom had families that had lived in the city for centuries. Many residents were connected to the city based on ancestry and culture. It is believed that the city was built during the Tang Dynasty in 621 AD, making it nearly 1400 years old. The stone architecture is made up of five entrance gates, breaking the Chinese tradition of having only four, and 265 archways feature preserved stonework of lions, dragons, phoenixes, and historical inscriptions. The features date to the Ming and Qing dynasties, with the surviving stonework dating to 1777, and the city walls dating to the 16th century. The city was rediscovered in 2001, when the Chinese government organized an expedition to see what might remain of the lost metropolis. Interest in exploration continued in 2011, when the Chinese National Geography magazine published photographs and illustrations hypothesizing what the city might have looked like in its heyday. 
Although the city is not huge, its underwater remnants have still not been fully mapped out. Today, advanced divers can get up close to the ruins, with several dive operators offering regular dives between April and November. Plans for an underwater tunnel to open up Xicheng to the general public are in the works. Despite being submerged underwater, the city is protected from wind, rain, and sun damage, keeping it a well-preserved relic of Chinese history. How cool is that? Which one grabbed you out of all those ancient cities submerged under the dark waters? Which one grabbed you the most? That Chinese lion city underground? That was magnificent. Off the coast of Japan, these pyramids that had roads that they're trying to say is not really made by humans and his natural formations come on you know we we know something else is up something that was an ancient civilization that they created and who knows what type of relics and what type of technology what type of literature they could possibly have under there that could possibly teach us something or uplift the next generation let's continue to dive on these waters oxygen level Oxygen level 50% warning. We're running out of air. Oxygen levels at 50%. Plan destination back now. Warning jet. Warning plan course for home. Man, that shark is almost as big as the boat. Look at that dude. He's looking at him like I'm ready to take a bite. I better move around. Buddy in there swimming, he ain't playing. The rarely seen giant phantom jellyfish was just spotted several times in Antarctica by something unexpected. In the 100 years since its discovery, there have only been 100 sightings. This is because they live in deep water that is still largely unexplored in Antarctica as the rarely seen giant phantom jellyfish was just spotted several times in Antarctica by something unexpected. In the 100 years since its discovery, there have only been 100 sightings. This is because they live in deep water that is still largely unexplored in Antarctica as it's expensive and hard to reach. However, cruise ships on Antarctic expeditions are changing the exploration game. Cruise guests can hop on this yellow sub for a private deep sea adventure. In just two months, guests had three sightings of the rare jellyfish that was longer than the submersible. With collaboration, these personal subs offer a huge opportunity for scientific research in polar areas. The rarely seen giant phantom jellyfish it's was fascinating. They're offering explorations near the Antarctica. And then you can hop in one of these boys and we can get around. Hey, we need to do it. Look, I got I got about four more seats back here. Where, whoever. Oh, man, our oxygen running out. Well, well, I still got three seats, you know, so it's it's a little cozy in here. You know, a little space. I got chips. I got chips. I got cookies over here. You know, it's um. Let me hit my finder. Let me see our next destination real quick. Okay. Yeah, we're we're good. We should be navigating through this um canal. And once we get through this canal, that should put us right where we need to be. Right now we're in this underwater cave. But yeah. We're 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 navigating, guys. We're we're working it out. Dang, it looked like it got shot.
another reason we don't swim naked. Another reason we don't swim naked. Another. Why? Why would you put your finger? Look at him. He, he already looks mad. Why make him even more mad? He's got a permanent frown on his mouth. He's got one red eye, one black eye. You know, he's got the the people's eyebrow going, kind of going right here. Why mess with him? Obviously, he's already ready to open up a can of whoop. You know, I try not to cuss on this channel. What's behind us is the most complete plyoscope skull discovered, probably worldwide. The fact that it's got the teeth mainly still in the sockets, meshed together in the jaw, it's almost you know, unheard of. They've got two carina so sharp cutting edges. Ridges along the two faces of the sort of tooth there, supposedly to break the sort of vacuum. More advanced features such as these uh, pits and that at the front of the snout. This is the top of the food chain. These are described as the, the largest carnivorous reptiles that ever lived. And certainly they were the, the mega predator of the, of the Jurassic Seas. The more fossils we find, the more evidence we can build on that. What's behind us is the most I love to see that. That looks cool. You guys think it's real or fabricated for entertainment purposes only? Drop your comment in the below. Your comments really help, man. I try to read through all of them. If I like it, that means I read it. If I heard it, that means I loved it. You know, and I'll try to comment. Like, this is so much stuff I try to do, you know. It's, it's a lot on your boy. But I'm trying, y'all. I appreciate every one of y'all. Oh, he was yawning. That was a long yawn. He must have just woke up. That was a good yawn. Wow, look at the details on him. I wonder what this fish is called. You can see like the blue veins all through it. Man, that is tight. This might be my favorite fish. If I had to have a favorite fish, it would be this fish right here. This is, I like the look of that one. Look at this, is that a slug? Look at this. Have you seen something like this before? I take it back. This might be my favorite fish. No, this isn't a fish. If I get a favorite snail or slug, this would be it. We're gonna call it the bubblegum snail. If you could, what would your name be for this? The Bubblegum Horned Snail is my name for it. The Bubblegum Horned Snail. Yeah, you know, they're so intelligent. He's burying himself. This is an octopus, I think. And it looks young. The fact that they thinking this hard, you know, at that young. Man, these things are intelligent.
you know, the most high really was showing out, man, when he made the, the earth. If you just look at all these creatures, how beautiful they look. You know, it's, we haven't even, I believe we only found like 13%. How they know how many total, I have no idea. But according to them, they only found 13% of total life underwater. Man, every time I watch one of these underwater videos, I see something new. Warning, oxygen levels are critical. Is that real? There's no way that could be real. There's no way. That would be amazing if he actually found that and that was real, but there's no way. It looks like an opal or something. What does it say? Glass, Ariel, opal? I don't know. I can't read. Look at the colors on this, dude. Absolutely fascinating. Uh-oh, got him. Shrimp's on the menu. That's actually a good shot. That's a good shot. beautiful look at the colors it goes through it goes through like 400 colors in two seconds Is it just me or does it look like it had a, a skull on his eye for a second? Look, look at his eye. His eye looks like it's got like a skull in the middle. And he's burying himself? Wow, intelligent. Warning, oxygen levels are critical. camouflage or something else. A 
believe this is the man of war man of war jellyfish got the angler warning oxygen levels are critical warning oxygen levels are critical Looks like a time lapse of a coral reef. I always wanted to do a saltwater tank, man, but those things are crazy expensive and a lot of maintenance. All right, guys, that's it for today's video. If you made it this far on these longer boys, put 100% great video. I really appreciate it and it helps the algorithm and a like and comment definitely helps. I appreciate you guys. Um, for tagging on tagging along with me on these longer videos i wanted to go underwater and you know uh do something a little bit different this time uh, i know some of you guys get mad at me replaying them a couple times my bad man i get in the moment moment i apologize you know um yeah thank you for checking this out man um thank you for watching this video i'm going but I just want to thank you guys for going on this adventure, this excursion with your boy under these dark waters. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace. Oxygen levels critical must surface. Oh, my oxygen levels. We got to get to the surface, guys. My oxygen levels is running out.